Well, you know, I think we've you've talked on a lot of the topics already in the beginning of the discussion. I think the fact that the tariffs came in at 10 percent instead of 25 percent was viewed positively by the market, and you're seeing the market rally on that. I think the market's being a little complacent because I think a lot of the actions that have taken place so far, um, both words and actions by China, show that they're digging in for the long haul. They're lowering tariffs on all the rest of their trading partners. They're easing credit, whereas before they were tightening credit. I think they're really digging their heels in. I think this, this may go on for longer than people expect. So that's why I think we're being complacent. And I think that actually dovetails nicely into the idea that the big risk is that the rest of the world goes into a further slowdown. I think the tariffs going into full effect, let's say, next year and lasting for longer than people expect, that can be a real risk to the market globally, which will then come back to the U.S. as well. That's why I feel like we're being a little complacent. The end result, you today. say, is an ever-growing threat to the world economy and to markets that may be ignored until it is too late. That suggests that it is time to move out of equities or at least de-risk my portfolio. Is that what you're proposing here, Chris? And then I'll get to you, Ernie. I'm definitely... I'm definitely not saying that you need to go to cash, that you need to do something radical, but I do think you need to be more concerned about where we are. I think as markets continue to move higher, you definitely want to be a little bit more cautious. I'd buy more quality companies. I'd make sure that the portfolio that you have is one that you would hold through a correction. Um, I'd be really wary of a lot of the momentum stocks and things that are really taking off right now. Those may be stocks you're going to regret having later when and if this correction does come due to the market finally pricing in. Ernie, Chris has thrown uh, uh, an egg in into the picnic. Maybe it's a prudent egg. What do you think? Well, it's a good egg. I mean, we look at a number of indicators, and the indicators that uh, concern us the most and will still categorize as neutral are really in the interest rate inflation side of the picture. So uh, we were talking about strong growth. We are talking about the Fed. Uh, we look at wage growth, which was 2.9 percent through August. Uh, when it gets to 4 percent, uh, that usually is a signal that there could be a recession in the offing. And the other issue is the Fed. The Fed takes a look at, and Steve talked about the Fed. Fed looks at inflation, inflation rising. They tend to uh, uh, accelerate, if you will, their rate increases and that yield curve, which is uh, has a slightly positive slope to it right now, starts to invert. Uh, usually 12 to 24 months after inversion, we start to see recession. So most of our concerns are not so much on the growth side, but that the growth side, if you will, would uh, over time uh, inflict or raise inflation concerns and become a headwind for equity. So, uh, as Chris said, we would concur at least that at le uh, interest rates will, will become at least a uh, headwind and uh, de-risking makes sense at this point. Chris, is that concerning you, the, the potential inversion of the yield curve? I mean, right now, at this moment in time, we're about 27 basis points, the spread between twos and tens. With one Fed rate hike, we could be practically there. With two rate, Fed rate hikes by the end of the year, we could be inverted. Should investors prepare their portfolio? For, for the eventuality of potentially a recession now? Well, you know, two things. One is I absolutely think an inversion of the yield curve is a, an ominous signal, and if that were to happen, you definitely need to prepare for potentially a recession coming soon after that. What I would say is I don't really look at the 210 spread in looking at the yield curve. I like more the three-month, 10-year uh, spread. So that's what a lot of Fed watchers will look at as opposed to a lot of market participants. And I think that's been a better indicator of, of when uh, an inverted yield curve will lead to a recession. I think if you look at the 210s, it doesn't always predict uh, a recession. I think you, it predicted probably you know 10 of the last seven recessions, if you know what I mean, in terms of three false positives. So it depends on which yield curve you look at. And I don't think we're there yet on the three-month to 10 but to your point, we absolutely are a lot closer on the two 10-year spread.